There's a question there of why is it that, that we have to have that, we, we have to always be right. What is it about our ego, about our pride, that drives so much of it? And it's interesting. Have you ever done something in your life and you're like, I did this for pride, and it turned out good for you? Uh, have you ever done something out of pride and it turns out really, really badly for you? Yep. Yeah, I think that you're going to find that that's mostly the case. Pride very rarely ever leads to something really positive. And by pride, I don't just mean like, like personal dignity. I mean something like, I have to be right about this no matter what. It usually leads to something really bad because that's something that shuts off all other reason. It makes us impervious to a reason. It makes us impervious to information, other arguments, things like that. And so um, one of the reasons for it is because however old that person is, whether it's you know, 5 or, or 55, we've gotten along in the world by having a certain worldview that we see things in a certain way. And when we see things a certain way, it allows us to exist, I guess, um, securely within the world. Meaning that we, it allows us to survive at a very rudimentary level. Like, in a, in a literal level, it allows us to survive. Um, and then we make sense of the world in a certain way. And the world is a chaotic place. It's scary. It's full of, 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 um, of inconsistencies, seemingly seeming inconsistencies. It's full of, of, of almost like attacks on our persona, which will, which will make sense more probably in a few weeks. But then when you come across some piece of information that completely retools the way that you see the world, then that messes you up. So um, in a practical sense, think of this, um, and it'll, it'll relate to that. Um, there's, there, there, there's a world out there that's an objective real world. In other words, there's a world as it really is. And it's difficult for us to perceive, because we don't see the world the way that it is. We see the world the way that we are, through, our, through this like, thick layer of personality. Um, as I was saying before, when you, when you perceive the world, you perceive it through your own experiences, through your own interpretations, and those are largely self-serving. And it's not intentional. It isn't like we walk around saying, oh, I'm going to be a, a selfish monster today. It's just the way that we make sense of the world. We perceive it in a certain way. It's kept us safe so far, so we continue to do it. And then, and then so what that means is that the way that you perceive the world might be something like, like this. In other words, it's not quite exactly as the world is, but it's pretty close. You know? And then there's a few of us who kind of do like this, so we can kind of agree on, on, on a lot of basic things. Now, think about a situation where you find out that you're completely wrong. Probably the worst situation that you can find out that you're, that you're completely wrong in. Let's say that you're in a relationship and, oh, go back to what I was saying earlier about, about my friend. You're in a relationship with someone and then they cheat on you. And especially if you've been with them for quite a while. And I'm talking, what's that? I said, well, you should get with the mother or the grandma. Get with the mom or the grandmother? Yes. Why not both? Hey, yo. Whoa. Fight back. <laughs> and yes, that will be on YouTube. <laughs> Posterity. So, so then when your parents ask you, so what do you learn in your English class? Well, let me show you this video. Um, now, you're, so that person cheats on you. Now, again, by the way, if you do do that, you become the monster that you're, that you're angry about. In a sense, yeah. so we'll say some more about that. But now, let's say you're with this person for a while. And that kind of dependent. You have to be with them for a while. You know, well, you know their name, you know their favorite color, you know, you, know, you hang out with their family, you, uh, you guys talk about everything, you finish each other's sandwiches. You're just really, really close. And then suddenly, one day, all of a you find out that this perception that you have of this person is completely wrong because they've been cheating on you, which means that the whole relationship completely is a lie. Now, the one thing, the one thing that you can anchor yourself in a chaotic world to is, I know this person. Oh, I know them. When they're upset, I know when they're upset. When they're happy, I know when they're happy. I know, I know that they don't like pickles on their cheeseburger, and if they put pickles in the cheeseburger, I'll take their cheeseburger back and make sure they don't get pickles on it. And all of a sudden, one day, you find out that, that who this person, you, who you thought this person was, is not who they, who they are. She likes pickles. She likes pickles, it turns out. And she likes your mom and grandma. Yes. So it's like, so it's like a two, like, it's like a two-piece type of relationship where you think this person's like this, like, at, like, basically, like, you know, this person, like, it's like your assumption of who this person is, you know, for so long, and then you realize when you notice they cheat on you or find, like, this other side of them, that's when you know that's a lie. Yeah, Obviously. and now if you're wrong about this, what else are you wrong about? Because this is, yeah, everything. This is the one thing you thought that you could be sure about. And it turns out to be the one thing that completely unsettles your, your, your 
your perspective of the world. Um, if any of you guys have little nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters, cousins, do you have to say, you know, however, however old this is, um, <laughs> one of the ways that you can measure a child's intelligence early on is whether or not they lie. Yep. Yeah, the earlier, a ch the, the younger you are when you start lying, in the, the correlation between your age when you start lying and your intelligence. Highly intelligent children lie early on. Now, why? Because the, what they understand is that they know something that you don't know. Most children don't know that. Most children kind of presume that whatever information they have, you have also. The, the ability to understand that we have different understandings of the world is a mature concept. It's something that takes some time to develop in little kids. But when a little kid realizes, I have a cookie, and this person doesn't know I have a cookie, and if I lie to them, I can create an alternate reality. I can create a reality in which they don't, in, in which I have a cookie, and they don't know that I have a cookie. Yeah, now they're not thinking of it that way in terms of like it's an alternate reality. What they are thinking about it in terms of I know something that you don't know, which means that we have divergent psychologies. That means that different people can know different things. Now, once you realize that, you realize that with just words, just words, I can completely change the course of your life. I can get you to believe certain things and act in certain ways. I can, and then of course at the, the far along level, I can lie to you and tell you that you're the only one and completely change the course of your life. Because if that person, if, if that person had found out way back then that you, weren't, that you were not uh, loyal to them, they wouldn't have gone down this path. Their life would have gone down this path. Maybe something like this. But, they're in a, but you, now you fast forward in life, they're over here rather than over here. And that could mean something like they didn't, they didn't go to school because they wanted to, to, to be with you. Or they didn't take a job. Or because they were with you, they didn't meet the person who would have been the real love of their life over here because they were loyal to you. The whole course, the whole trajectory of their life is completely changed. Their life will never be the same because of your words that you used back here to change the course of your life. You know? It's not a small thing, it's not instant. We, we, we don't think of it this way, but it's absolutely true. And so by lying to a person, again, you, you actually literally create a, an alternate version of reality. And that person now lives in this reality. My boyfriend is so wonderful. My girlfriend is so fantastic. We're so loyal to each other. And all of a sudden you find out it's not the case either way. And it doesn't have to just be that. That can also be something like you find out some truth about your parents. You know, um, you find out some truth about your best friend. The worst thing is when you find out some truth about yourself and you've been lying to yourself all along about something. You've been trying to avoid this thing. And a lot of times, those are the monsters that we're, that we're fighting. Yeah, there are monsters outside of you, but the monsters outside of you, it's child's play. That's <laughs> child's play, man. The monsters that are inside of you that you're fighting, those are hard. Because first off, how do you fight an enemy you don't even know is there? You know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're sitting there and, you're, and you have to close your eyes, and you have to fight with someone, how do you fight with that person in a dark room with your eyes closed and blindfolded, and that person is not? They can come at you from, yeah, exactly, you can. They come at you from every angle, every second. You can't do it. Yeah. For a little, from the quote, when, when I see, when I hear the word of this, when you mention that, basically what I'm seeing, like, like you said before, like, oh, how do you fight something like you can't see? Basically, for me, like, the person that's fighting inside of you, I just see it as, like, oh, it's, like, weight on your shoulders, or it's just been this, like, regret, or, like, this, like, one thing that you do know, but you don't want to believe it, but you know it happened, and you're trying to forget about that, but at the same time, but at the same time, you get to accept it, so you would to atone from that mistake in the first place. Yeah. Basically. What am I gonna ask? Why? Oh, close. How? Like what? Oh. Like what kind of a regret? Or what kind of thing can weigh a person down this way? I feel like, like imagine like you did something to like your friend that that they would they should have known in the first place, like like something like really horrible yeah. that their like their family knows but they don't, but you never told them in the. Never told them for like a couple of years until you told them later on, and then they feel they feel betrayed after that. And you feel bad, just feel you should have told them earlier on, later on at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You let them kind of exist in this alternate reality. World. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but some of the worst things are like you. <clears throat> some of you will understand this. Not yet, not yet. But you will understand this someday. You are, um, there's some like deep truth or there's some like deep secret that you're hiding from your, from your parents. 
from your mom, especially from your mom. And then you're going to be like 25 and you're going to tell your mom, back when I was 17, I X, Y, Z, and your mom's going to sit there and nod and go, I know. How, did, how could you have known? You couldn't have known. No, I knew. And then they'll tell you like somehow they found out that you had done something that you're trying to keep from them. Please stay quiet. Yeah, it's like, well, why didn't you say anything? Eh. <laughs> you know, maybe not. And, and that truth, by the way, will become far more evident when you guys are parents. It's just like, if any of you guys sit there and you're like, how can someone just yell at their kids? You know, why would you get so frustrated that you yell at your kids? I would never do that. Cut your pearls. I would never do something like that. <laughs> and whenever you, whenever you clutch your pearls and you say something like, I would never, and whatever's in the blank, get ready. Because you're about to do it. You know? I would never like, oh, you just did, didn't you? <laughs> I would never, whatever it is, whatever it is. Because that, what you're going to find a lot of times is that, is that revulsion against something is a lot of times, and I'm not saying all the time, but a lot of times it's a revulsion against ourselves. It's a thing inside of yourself that you hate about yourself. It's just like, um, like for example, we look at cheaters and we're like, oh my god, I hate cheaters. I, oh my god, I hate cheaters. Oh. <laughs> so you're a cheater. You're a cheater in disguise, huh? Not me, that person over there. No, Who are you? But we're looking at you right now. No, no, don't look at me. Look at that person over there. They're terrible. Wait, if we look closer, what's that on your collar? What's that on your... Don't look at me. Look at them. <laughs> because the thing that we're trying to call attention to in others, some t oftentimes, is the thing that we hate about ourselves. Because we're aware that we're, that we're susceptible to that. It's like, some people, why don't, why don't they cheat? They just don't have opportunities to. Some people, why don't they cheat? Because they know they're cheaters. And so you just don't put yourself in that situation. If you're a person and you know like, oh yeah, I'm a cheater. <laughs> so then maybe I shouldn't try to trick myself into thinking, it's just coffee. It's just dinner. It's just a text. No, it's nothing is just anything in life. Everything means something. Yeah. So basically like when you said like, oh, don't focus on me, focus on then basically you could like recently when you lie to yourself, it's like, oh, basically you've turned to a hypocrite as I'm hearing. It's like, I would never do this, but you did it anyways, but yeah. you might not to do it. Yeah. And it's something that's deep in that because the lie isn't just to other people, the lie is to yourself. Yeah. You know, the lie to other people, we can trick people all day. But the problem is that when you go home and you go to sleep at night, you're in that dark room by yourself. You're in that abyss and you and you have those thoughts and we'll try to cover them up. We'll listen to music, we'll watch something, we'll try to distract ourselves. But man, all that we're doing is we're putting off becoming who we are and understanding who we are. Because there are these two parts of you. There's these two parts of everybody. You've got your persona, and that's the thing that you show the world. Look, this is who I am. And then we've all got that shadow behind as well. These are the things that we keep hidden from the world. And they don't necessarily have to be terrible negative things about you. It isn't like, I'm a murderer. You know? oh, it could be, it could be, I'm insecure. It could be, you know, I don't trust people because I've been hurt. It could be I've been abused in the past. It doesn't have to just be stuff that, that, that you're guilty of, but it could just be things that you don't want to show the world. Now the problem becomes when we, sh when we push this persona, and then this persona pushes down this shadow, and we try to stop it from ever emerging. But what happens if you try to push something down? All you're doing is you're creating pressure. And eventually those little, little parts of those things are going to start to po poke through. Yeah. Kind of like, I don't remember if it was in this class, but I was giving this example to, about something last week. If you've ever known someone that they get really angry and then they punch a wall. And then they're like, oh my god, I can't believe I punched. That's not who I am. That's not me. But uh, well, who the fuck punched the wall then if it's not you? Well, that's not, but that's not who I am. Yes, it is. It's exactly who you are. It's who you are under those specific circumstances. It doesn't mean that's who you are all the time. But it means that when you find yourself in a situation like that, that is who you are. And that's important for us to understand. Because now, if you don't want to be that person who punches a wall, you need to step back and look at it and go, okay, what's the circumstances that brought me to the point that I did that? Um, let's say it was an argument, I was frustrated because I wasn't getting my point across. Now you know that when you find yourself getting to that point in an argument, how do you not punch the wall? You don't just not punch the wall, you need to stop, tell the person, listen, I'm getting very angry and frustrated because my point's not coming across. I have to walk away from this. And that might, it might not be that easy, because you might have that person who's then in your ear, that's right, because you're a coward. You can never deal with the real issues. I need to walk away, <laughs> because you realize that if you don't, you're going to be that person who punches a wall. 
or and then if you find yourself in a situation where that person keeps pushing and keeps pushing, and you recognize that you're that person who's going to punish the wall if they keep put, uh, keep pushing, but then you probably need to end that relationship because yeah, right. otherwise that's who you're going to become because you're going to be in that situation a lot. Yeah, but it's hard. Yeah. But, but often we, we look at it like it's like it's one thing, it's like, it's, like it's one side. Oh, that person made me. Oh, because you're so weak. That person can make you do stuff. No, no one can make you stay in a relationship. If you choose to stay in a relationship, you have to take ownership of it. Yeah, I, I chose to be here. I forced myself into this, into this position. I'm, I'm allowing myself to stick around because I love this person so much. I can't imagine a life without them. But that's that deep personal introspection that, that forces us to examine what it is that brings the monster out of us. Because, uh, remember, last week I said, we all have a monster inside of us, hopefully. Hopefully. But you have to be able to control that monster. If you've got somebody around you who's making it difficult for you to control the monster, then that person's probably bad for you. Then, and they're going to make you a worse person. What kind of a relationship should you be in? You should be in one that makes you a better person. And that means any kind of relationship. It means friendships, it means family relationships, it means uh, significant others, romantic relationships, any relationship that you're in, even school relationships. If you're in a, if you're in a class with a, with, a, with a teacher that makes you a worse person, it's a good idea to try to find a different teacher for that period and go, and go study with them. Because if any, anything that makes you a worse person makes it difficult for you to live according to reality. It forces us to create alternate realities just so we can survive in the one that we find ourselves in. And so, it takes a deep level, though, again, of, of introspection to recognize when I'm in this situation, that's the person I become. That's the monster that I am. That's who I am. And it's a hard thing for us to get our heads around because we like to believe that we're good people. Maybe we are. Maybe we are. Most people, like I said, aren't good or bad. We don't make the decision in the morning to be good or bad. Most of the decisions that we make, we don't sit there and go, I'm going to decide to be a good person. I'm going to decide to be a bad person. Most, is, most good and evil in the world is done by people who never make up their minds to be good or evil. We just do things, and all of a sudden, it turns out to have been good or evil. You know? So, finding out what those monsters are. Because if you gaze into the abyss, whatever it is that you stare into, whatever it is that you allow yourself to kind of focus on, like what you're coming over here was saying, whatever you, allow, whatever you allow yourself to focus on, well, that's the thing that you're going to become. If you allow yourself to focus on toxicity, like we say, like, oh, it's a toxic relationship. Um, it's, there's two of you, though. There's the person who's being toxic, probably both of you, but by tolerating it, you're being toxic towards yourself as well. Yeah. So it's like, the, really, the main idea is, like, basically, it's your decision if you want to, like, lie about it, or you just want to tell the truth about it. That's basically the idea. Yeah. About how and, and, and to just be aware of what you're doing when you lie about things. That you're creating this alternate reality. You're genuinely upsetting the direction of a person's life. You, you genuinely are. And it's not a small thing, it's not a trivial thing. And also, by the way, understand that that means that when someone lies to you, they've done this to you also. And so there's something to, to be said about, about forgiveness, and there's something to be said about mercy. But there's also something to be said about valuing your own life. What's that? Yeah, there's always a limit. What that limit is, I don't know, that's wisdom. Um, I wonder if some of you are that person that, like, you're, you're just like, you know what, man? The one thousandth time that you do me dirty, that's it. I'm out. Yeah. I wonder if you, I wonder how many of you are that person that, like, if I ever suspect, <laughs> even if I'm wrong, if I suspect you even might do might do it one time, that's enough for me. I'm out. And there's there's some of us who are really good at holding on to people long after we should, and then there are some of us that are really good at just jettisoning people from our lives, and we're really good at just cutting people off. There's probably something in the middle that's wisdom. That's wisdom. You have to be able to recognize which people are worth it. And that's so hard. Because then you have to make that, that determination. You're worth it. You're not. And then, but that's so mean. Yeah, but that's your life. And you've only got one. And if you value your life, you should value your time. Because that's the stuff that your life is made of. And if you're going to value your time, that means you have to value those relationships. Because you've only got so much time to put into them. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, resistance, critiques. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Cheating, lying, uh, changing the course of reality. Mm. It's just Wednesday.